and the barrier you cannot penetrate. Energy, unity, destiny. Tiger football, let her rip. For 1995 Tiger football season tickets, call 678-2331. We'll see what Southwestern Louisiana can do now. Under 12 minutes left to go in the game. And DeLome out of trouble again. Still some pressure by Hogan. Nearly picked off by Keith Spann. He's everywhere, my friends. He and Jerome Woods are like blank blankets. And there's your guy again, David. He's always around the football and hit him in a bad spot. He's, he's going to read pass all the way and got a little crossing route coming. And once the quarterback is flushed out, you're going to see Span coming to your pitcher as he trails the wide receiver. And he, he really had a play, and he might have been thinking touchdown instead of catching the football. But well, he and Jesse Allen have had a couple of big opportunities. The long quick play over the middle to Stokely. Oh, that's a tough play to defend. That's a timing pattern, a couple of step drops, and Stokely just moves right into it. And th that's, a, that's a tough combination right there. Jeremy Stewart, who is just a freshman from Oak Haven High School here in Memphis, makes the play. And that was a good thing he made it. Otherwise, that guy was off to the races. It's, it's the same. What they're doing, they're doing a two-receiver side, and Stokely's on the inside of what he's doing. He's just coming down, planning, and going right to the middle. A look at the scoring in this game. Memphis has put up points on the board in every quarter. The Tiger defense has given up only three points in the fourth quarter this year. They gave up only 21 all last year. And there's a nifty catch made by Southwestern Louisiana. Chris Smith finally did make the stop, but not before Darren Stroder, the junior from Lafayette, made his sixth catch of the year. Another first down for the Raging Cajuns. As we see the long, he's going to take a look and look over the field, and he's going to see number 18 coming to his pitch. Nice step, nice, nice. He has very good delivery, makes a good catch. It, it, it's getting late for Southwest Louisiana. They're going to need, if they're going to score, they're need, going to need to put some points on the board real quick. Tell you, PJ Fryer was hooked up with Sam Heinen in a pretty good battle, and there's another big play for Southwest Louisiana. They're not going to football right down the field. Jerome Woods stopped them that time. Four members, number 11. And they're really trying to sustain a drive to get get some points on the board. Maybe go for a two-point conversion. Canyon Cotton with the big play there. Memphis's total yardage after three quarters was 241, and southwestern Louisiana had been held to 137. They've had only 46 yards in the ground and 91 through the air, but they're picking up some uh, real estate on this drive. There's DeLome. Nifty kind of a play is stood up. Marvin Thomas smelled out the fullback that time, and Kenyon Cotton, who picked up the big play on the play before, could go nowhere that time. And so, no gain, second and I guess they're going to give him a yard or two. And Marvin Thomas, he had that little, little injury, but as you can see, he's still in the ball game. Southwest Louisiana really can't be happy with their output offensively. They had 576 yards against the uni University of Alabama Birmingham. They don't even have 200 yards, so they're, they're going to be very disappointed. That ball nearly picked off. Well, that was telegraphed a mile and a half away, and Chris Smith saw it coming. That was dangerous. They tried to go to Struther again, and Chris Smith knew it was kind of, I think this this young lady knew it was too she could see it that was telegraphed a mile and a half away and, and what he really did he, he he watched his receiver all the way and if Chris could give a little bit more push he could have had an interception he could have been going the other way for six so third down and eight from the Memphis 32 five man front you're looking at the old 52 here pressure over the middle short of the first down anyway, and Jerome Woods hit it again. Another hard hit by the senior from Melrose High School. And what the Tigers secondary are doing, as soon as these wide receivers and running backs are catching the ball, the Tigers are really putting the shoulder pad right into them. So, excellent play. Again, the Tigers are going to have to do a better job of covering over the middle. Teams are attacking them right in the middle, which would be a soft spot, but the, good, the hard hitting will make a wide receiver want to drop the football, so good play by Jerome Woods. With 9.43 left to go in this game, Nelson Stokely knows you got to go for it now. Field goals won't help. 
He puts Brandon Stokely, his son, in motion. Big pressure on DeLome, who fires it up for grabs, and it's knocked away by Memphis, although there was a man wide open, and Chris Smith put a big lick on him to make him drop the ball. Good defensive series for the Tigers. And they came with a blitz and gonna put put your man on man and DeLong really didn't really didn't see the receiver, so he just throws it up and good attempt, but there again is the big hit by Chris Smith. And look for the Tigers on this offense series to take some time off the clock, try to run the ball and melt the clock so they can go ahead and put this game away. Tigers uh, will get the ball at their own 32 with 9.36 left to go in the game. 33 to 6, Memphis on top. Their defense has been spectacular this evening. Shitting Morch is going to keep. So I thought he saw a little crack, but again, in a hurry. He gets two yards, and that is all. Stop was made by uh, Kelsey Dotson. Dotson, the linebacker, just a junior. Big kid, 6'1, 228. And Joe Boris is quietly having a pretty good second half. And I think the veteran quarterback has come in. He's made some big plays, and he's got his confidence. He's showing poise. And on this drive right here, the Tigers want to run the ball, and they also want to protect the football to keep that clock going so they won't have to put the defense back on the field. That was a little draw that went for the ball. Nothing. Spalding on the hesitation, tried to make something out of no room, but there was nothing to do with Paul Campbell made the stop. And you can look for the, the raging cages to, to blitz, take some chances on trying to get the football back. Eight and a half minutes left to go in this game. Third and long. Watch out. He let it go, and that thing was nearly picked off. Not a wise throw by Borich, who really paid the price. Slowing down, but as he uh, was about to be helped by his teammate, Joe said, no, 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 I don't need any help. He was telling Josh Miller, I'm okay. Davis Marsh is going to come over as well. As offensive lineman deserves some credit tonight. You know, there's not many of them. I call them the Sassy Seven. You got your only freshman starter and Ron Sells. You got Miller, who's regained his starting position. Ken Newton, who's been tough, the junior from White Station High. Keith Settler, Davis Marsh, a swimmer. Didn't even play football till 93. They really put it together. Coughlin with the wind behind him, kicks it high. Here's Terrell. And there's a flag on the play. Terrell goes down hard at the 41. 35-yard kick by Coughlin. Timeout on the field. 33-6. Memphis appearing to win their first game of the year. Goes out 95. Kickoff 96. 10-390 for a new air-conditioned Mazda truck. 13-990 for a new Protégé LX Automatic loaded. 15-490 for a loaded new 626 LX. Hi, I'm Rip Shearer, University of Memphis head football coach, inviting you to register at Homer Skeleton Mazda for the Dash for Cash. The winner will receive tickets, parking passes, and 24 seconds to grab as much cash as possible. Let her rip. Homer Skeleton Autoplex. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value. And it's only at Embassy Suites. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. There was an illegal block on the punt return on USL, so they back it up 10 yards. It's first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Greg Hamilton, the ball carrier. Greg Hamilton, the backup. Doesn't get much. He's a tough kid. 6'1", he's 235, just a sophomore. He ran into Richard Hogan's. Hogan's has about 20 pounds on him. Knocked him down. Man, these guys are serious. They'll be, they'll be starting to celebrate anytime soon. Their first victory under Rip Shearer. Nice to see the Shearer era finally get on track, huh? 
and, and this is what they say, let her rip, and the ti Tigers really ripped into the Raging Cajuns tonight. Second down and eight, and DeLong, a different look from the shotgun. Lost it. And Stokely at midfield. Boy, that kid is everywhere. On the Knocked out of bounds well, by Jerome okay, Woods. That, that was a pretty pass. That's one Cajun who has, who has not given up, and he's running some excellent routes, and he's, he's had very good hands. You, you look to the coaches, as we take a look at DeLong, make a, a drop back pass and what he's going to throw is a what we call a post point and he's going to lay it out where only his guy can make the catch and he threw the ball in, in between two Tigers defenders this young man he's had an excellent game he's made some very good catches and he has very soft hands so that's something they can build on well he only had three catches coming in he's got three tonight that was his output in one game that was a nice little pass out to the flat and that goes for big yardage in the Memphis territory it was uh, caught by Fletcher. Marvin Thomas finally knocked him down. Good pursuit by the big guy, but not before a pickup of about 18 yards. At the Memphis 35-yard line, first down and 10 for the Raging Cajuns. And they're, get, they're getting some very good protection from the offensive line. And what Southwest Louisiana doing is still running the offense, and they're just trying to make some plays, put some points on the bo board, and be consistent. With time over the middle. He's got his man. And he lumbers all the way down inside the Memphis 10 yard line before Richard Hogan's could finally put him away. That was Garrick Mayweather, the third string tight end. His second catch of the game, and he showed you he could do something once he got the ball. And even though you got a big comfortable lead, you, you still don't want to give up big plays like this. And this is, like I said, the area that I think the Tigers defense is vulnerable. You get your big tight end, you sit him in the middle, and you got a big comfortable lead, but you don't want to give up these big dri drives to give the offense any confidence. Here's the numbers on Brandon Stokely. It was the tight end Mayweather who just made the big play. First and goal from the eight. Jerome into the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown in traffic. That was good coverage, but they could not stop Mayweather. And that just shows good effort by the Raging Cajuns. They, they know they're down 27 points, but they're still in the fighting. And they're, they're going to do that thing by passing the football and excellent effort by the wide receiver. He just goes up and takes the football, and the Tigers' corners are playing a little bit soft, so he was able to get in the end zone and look like they're going to go for two. Well, Scott Singler put a big hit on him, but it didn't dent him at all. They will. It's 33-12. Pass knocked down in the end zone. Good defense by the Tigers that time. That was a forward lateral just a lot. It was a, kind of an underhanded toss. And good effort by DeLong. He really couldn't get his feet set, so he's just really gonna, gonna flip the pa pass. So 621 left to go in this game. 33-12. It's time to announce our defensive play of the game, brought to you by River Oaks Realty, and here come the Tigers. And a great effort by the Tigers defensively. They pressured DeLong all night. He really had, had a chance to get his feet set, and the defense, ever since the Michigan game, they've been very aggressive, and they've come out. They've, they've clogged up the middle, made some hard hits, and the effort on defense has, has really sparked the Tigers tonight to bring the special teams and the, and the uh, offensive team into play tonight. That was one of the four sacks that the Tigers have had in this game. So our defensive player, player of the play of the game, again, is brought to you by River Oaks Realty. Here's the Bryan offensive play of the game, and it's... The big pass to the backup tight end, Chris Powers, and watch him ramble. And on the previous play, he got caught from behind, but Chris saw open field, and he was determined to get in the end zone. Oh, this is that first this play. This is the first play. But he did have that big, big, big touchdown. touchdown catch a little later when he just put uh, Tim Sensley, waved him away with his shoulder. Tigers are looking for the onside kick. So they got the hands team and guys with the good hands that know when the ball is coming, they're going to go get it. And that's exactly what they do try. It bounces off a couple of Tigers and it's picked up 
by the Raging Cajuns, I believe. There's a flag on the play which leads you to believe it's offsides. offsides. The rip shearer is not going to like what he just saw. And your hands, Tim, you really, you just want to get the ball and down it. You don't want to make a play and run. You just want to get the ball in your possession and cover it up. Sensely got to the ball, but all for naught. We got an update downstairs with Matt Dillon. What's going on, Matt? Dave, part of this big crowd at the Liberty Bowl tonight, the proud parents, Deron Sutton, John and Doris Sutton from Warner Robins, Georgia. And John, a long trip for you to the Liberty Bowl. First time here, and it's really great to be here in the Liberty Bowl. And we hope to come back again uh, real soon and see another game. Doris, is your son always been this good in athletics? Yes, he has. Yes, he has always. Always been good. Some proud parents, Dave, the Suttons, and they're watching their son play for the Tigers. Sutton getting the start, became a starter at Michigan. He was a transfer from Georgia Military Academy, and uh, he's having a good night tonight, that's for sure, and so are Mr. and Mrs. Sutton. Well, anytime you can have a good game and you have your, your parents in the stand, that, that always gives you a good feeling, but look like uh, the Raging Cajuns have taken over the football, so it I wasn't guess, offside. I guess it was an offside Memphis. The long gets hit as he lets it go, and it is almost picked off by Kevin Cobb. He had great coverage that time on Struther. Well, they've gone to Struther, the junior, and Stokely, the freshman, here in the second half. What's happened to Donald Richard, the experienced senior? What's happened to Franco Smith, the sophomore from Shreveport, who's had a bunch of catches? They've hardly gone to their tight end, Cody Romero, who had six catches coming in. And Richard is really the big play receiver for the Raging Cajun, and he really hasn't been in this game all Offensively, uh, it's been Stokely, and like you mentioned, number 18. They, they did a good job, and he turned into a defensive back on that play because that ball was underthrown. The Loma again feels some heat, and his man over the middle dropped the football. But you're going to get an interference call on Kevin Cobb. Struther made a nice move to get himself open because Cobb was over there, and and then Cobb had to reach in. But DeLone was dancing. He bought himself some time, too. It looked like he was going to get clobbered. Showed he had good feet, kept his head up. And the key to any quarterback is to look at their feet. He kept his head up, and he found a receiver. And it looked like the Tigers are, are playing a prevent defense, and I think they really need to go back to their base defense. This game is not over yet, so they still, still want to get some pressure on the quarterback. First down. Well, R.C. Lauterbach lets you know. It was interference. Tigers are now a little bit looser on the sidelines. First and ten from the 23. That won't get anything. Richard Hogan's over there in a hurry. We've called his name a bunch tonight. Boy, Barnett and Hogan's in the middle have been tough. And Spann and Woods in the middle, a little further back, have been tough. Well, the defensive line starts it all, and then it moves back to your linebackers, and then you get those those second, secondary guys that are hitting people. So as a, good, uh, as a unit, the Tigers have played well defensively. Second down and nine. In there. Number 22, Greg Hamilton, the ball carrier. The uh, Tigers with that last penalty. Ten times now for 93 yards. That is not for Memphis, number 23, really the kind of uh, display you see from a Rip Shearer team. He, he, he's very discipline oriented and, and fundamentals and being smart is, is the key to, in, to his football team. And, Ten penalties, you really don't want to see that, so the Tigers are going to have to make some adjustments as far as blocking in the back and having those holding penalties because they came at key situations and key plays of the game. The shotgun in third and eight. Rome over the middle, that's been the start. He's got Struther first and goal at the eight-yard line. That was just a play. Keith Cobb that time came over and tried to help out, but uh, this is becoming a pretty tough play for Memphis to defend. And again, it, it, it's right in the middle, and they're running a little little square in route, and they hit him right in the middle of that scene. And he's sitting down in an excellent play by DeLong. And this Raging Cajun team, they haven't given up. with still four minutes and 33 seconds left, and the clock's still running. So they're still trying to get some points on the board, and they think they have a chance to win this game. And the Tigers gave up only 21 points in the fourth quarter all last year. Three points, that against Michigan this year. Malone has a lot of 
time. There's that rough a timing pattern to the corner of the end zone. And Keith Cobb absolutely took it away. That was great defense. There's Brian Davis, Amy French, the uh, trainer. She's now a graduate student. Graduate assistant. For, for Brian Davis, a kid with a lot of heart, and you hate to see him on the bench, but you know with his heart and he's a senior, you really want to finish your senior season. I, I know because sitting out the senior season that I had, you have an injury, but you look back and you have good memories, but he'll be back. His is not as serious. He's just got a mild sprain, and with a little rehab, he'll be back in. Let me have three weeks, they say. There's the pattern inside. Great defense by Kevin Cobb. Oh, he was slick as you could be on that play. He just went right around the shoulder. Defensive player of the game, brought to you by River Oaks, Jerome Woods. And you really could have gone two ways this way. It's set up for us to just go with one, but give an assist to Keith Spann, huh? Yeah. That's Span is your guy. Woods is my guy along with that number he's wearing, but he, he, he he's making me proud, Dave. He's wearing 30 very well. Nine tackles and an interception. All in your honor, Marvin. Third down and goal from the eight to the end zone. Knocked away. One more play, though. As the clock is stopped with 403. You know that Nelson Stokely's going to go with it. And again, they tried to go to his son, Brandon Stokely. Yeah, the long, he's really showing a lot of heart, and he's really buying some time for his receivers to get open. And he's not giving up. And what this does, this is going to give them some more practice on the offense because they really haven't got the output on the offense that you really expect for this passing team. That's what I love, to see the family affair that the University of Memphis games have become. Now, Rip Shearer talks about family with his team, and uh, it's becoming that way with the fans as well. Only 17,000 tonight, but the rain kept it down. Here's a big rush by Bonner, who's been all over the place, and it's incomplete, and the Tigers have held again. And so that fourth quarter defense has this crowd standing and cheering. What this ex exciting brand of football brings, Dave, you have 17,000 tonight. The next to the home game, you have 20, 25,000. So what this does, this is going to want the Memphis community to come and watch these Tigers play some very good football, and they played excellent tonight. Now, bottom line, if they were to win next week in Little Rock, and we'll have that game for you right here on Channel 30. There will be a big crowd on hand for Louisville the and following week. That will get them back to 500. Kelly in motion. Odin's back in. Odin on the option, and Odin gets slammed right at the line of scrimmage. He didn't gain an inch, and there's a flag. Somebody's going to get nailed with an unsportsmanlike. And really, the, the raging cage, they really didn't need that penalty. You, you got the Tigers pinned deep, and you stop them on three, da three downs, you have an opportunity to take, take over on the punt. But there's the horses right there, the Sassy Seven. We mentioned the starters before. Not sure we had a chance to really talk about Daniel Gomez and Brand Ackley, and both have started games this year. So Memphis, although they have only seven, they do have seven skilled offensive linemen. First down. It is 15 yards against southwestern Louisiana, and you figure that frustration is starting to show there. Now, the only ouch so far in terms of injuries for Memphis this game has been Brian Davis. You see getting up slowly and gingerly is Josh Miller, the kid from Bartlett. He's played since the minute he signed as a freshman out of... He got playing time. And... Uh, Started all the games last year, has started a couple of the games this year. I think he's okay. First and ten, you know that Memphis is going to continue to run. Pleasure. Nowhere to go. He'll lose a yard. And to make a point on the offensive line, the, these guys, they've, they've been put in the newspaper and saying they're only seven, but these guys have a lot of heart. They really simplified the offense, and they wanted to, them to react instead of think for. So the hats off go to the offensive line coaches for cutting back on the defense, knowing what skills these young men have, and they've been able to hold their own tonight, and hopefully they'll get better as the season progresses. But they have did an excellent job tonight. Been a long game, almost three hours old. 3.10 left in this one as the Tigers try to run off some more time. Odin with a one-back set. And the whistles everywhere. I don't see any laundry on the field, but 
Well, the whistle was blowing. Ta time clock. Good eyes, Marvin. I saw the sophomore Bernard Oden was a little late in getting that play called. I should say getting that, that play started. Delay a game. Five yard penalty. Still second down. So that, that adds up to another penalty for the Tigers. So you, you, you're really going to see the Tigers in practice going through some things as far as technique because 11 penalties, you're really taking yourself out of pretty good field position. Get a good look at Bernardo and they list him at 6'3", 185. He looks bigger than that to me. Doesn't he? He, he, he looked like he'd be 6'3", about two, 200, 205. Yeah, he, that's what big, I'm thinking. He, he's a big compact guy and he, he can take some big hits. He took one right there. He tried to get away. Couldn't he sack back at the 10-yard line? That's a loss of seven yards. It'll set up third down and very long with 233 left to go in the game. Mitchell got him. That's the second sack in the game for Jeff Mitchell, who now has 17 career sacks. And the two tonight are the first two on the year. That's against Nevada, and you, you would have thought against UAB, he'd have had a few. Mm -hmm. And you got a timeout by Southwest Louisiana. That they're really trying to take advantage of the field position that the Tigers are in. And you want to you want to run the football, but also on this end of the field, you want to protect the football and make a smart play. Matt Dillon's got something for us downstairs. Matthew. Dr. Don Carson, the Tigers' interim AD. Well, Dr. Carson, good night tonight for the Tigers in the Liberty Bowl. It's a great night. This has been a really good football game. You know, fake field goal, touchdown, kicks going out in the inside the five-yard line, guys playing with a great deal of enthusiasm, and coaches willing to take risks and make it entertaining. This crowd's made some noise tonight. They, they've made a lot of noise tonight. You know, it's good when you win and people go away happy saying it was a great game. This crowd's going to go away very, very happy. Talk about winning tonight. A big one next week. Arkansas and Little Rock. Uh, looking forward to that one. We're looking forward to it, too. You know, we beat them three years in running. We go there with expectation to beat them again. It's set up, David. The Tigers and Arkansas next week in Little Rock. Yeah, Arkansas set it up for sure by beating Alabama today. That's a shocker on everybody's schedule. And uh, they'll... Uh, I, I can't see them looking past Memphis even though they had that big emotional victory because they've yet to beat the Tigers. They're 0 for history. And they're right, they're right across the border, so you, you know they're going to want to have a victory against the Tigers. Third and 23. Look out. Oh, my goodness. How did he get out of that? He's still on his feet. All the way to the 32-yard line. That's just shy of the first down. Kelsey Dotson finally got to him. You know, he's definitely bigger than 185. You could knock down 185. You could knock him down. Well, and, and we talk about it quite a bit about his athletic ability and being mobile. And I, I think they're cheating him at 185. I would give him at least 205. He's a big guy, but not only is he tall, but he's kind of wide, so he's got a little muscle on him. And he stayed up tonight. He wasn't bored by this. Dad gets a breather now. Fourth down and about three in our offensive player of the game. Brought to you by Brian Meets. Chris Powers. Four receptions, 75 yards, two touchdowns. One from Adam English. And that, that was on the exciting trick play on the field goal. But in the offensive room, he'll get a real because he caught, got caught from behind by a defensive lineman on a pass play. So Chris had a good game, but he also had some ribbing in the film room on tomorrow. And now three Tigers have thrown for touchdowns this year. Odin, Vorich, and English. And English. That'll be a great trivia uh, question in a few years. The Liberty Bowl press box. We are high in the corner. And a little razzle dazzle by the Tigers trying to catch the Reds and Cajuns off guard, and they got the ball snapped. It worked. There's not anybody back to field it except the punt wasn't the best. And I think they got the Raging Cajun with two minute men on the field. If they do, they'll get the first down. Now, you know, Chuck Stobart tried this a few times, and Chuck could never get a break. They'd call him for unsportsmanlike conduct, which was truthfully not in the rule book. It should have been too many men. There they're doing it. They just won't let you get away with that one. Repeat. And what they're saying is you didn't give it off the defense time enough to get off the football field. 
They're consistent with it, I'll say that. Two coaches now have been burned by that play. 2.07 left in this game, and Memphis will have to kick it over. 